And, and the players enjoy knowing that I'm going to be in the three hole again today, even though I went 0 for 4 last night with three punch outs. A little bit of a comfort for everybody. Absolutely. Beautiful. They're a little bit different, I think. It, it, it's changed the, the game of baseball like many. Beautiful day here in Durham. We're ready to go, and Ryan Higgins delivers ball one, and off we go on this Friday afternoon. The game moved up four hours due to impending inclement weather that could hit the uh, area a little bit later on today, so we want to make sure we get this one in. Vance Honeycutt having such a phenomenal season for North Carolina and what has been a phenomenal career for the Tar Heel center fielder. Yeah, he's he, unbelievable athlete. I'm talking to some scouts, he's there. They love coming out to watch batting practice. Everything he does is effortless. Great defender, uh, kind of does it all, and he's going to benefit from that once it comes draft time. Crowns will into the shift. Morris, the second baseman. And nice dig there by Bravo for the first out. As we take a look at the blue. 2-0 fastball you want to take a hack at, especially to start the game. Brings Casey Cook to the plate, and he takes a breaking ball low. It's going to be important, I, th I think. We, we talked earlier whether you throw 97 or 87. These pitchers are going to need to be able to throw non-fastballs and fastball counts, i.e. miss with a breaking ball here. Are we willing to repeat it? But, but isn't that kind of the way things are going with baseball as a whole now? Traditionally, you thought 3-0, 3-1 are always fastball counts. Even maybe a 2-0, 2-1 count is a fastball count. You're seeing guys throw sliders in those situations. Yeah, you know, there, a lot of folks talk spin to win, right? I, I think that can you can go to an extreme there, too. Fouled up the first baseline by Cook. It'll be interesting to watch Higgins. He's, you know, five-ish walks per nine innings. He's a... Mid 90s fastball guy gets across his body. He's got some deception to his delivery, but because he gets across his body, he could get in a mode where his front shoulder opens up a little bit. Be curious to watch how he does command wise. Off to the left, Cruson gives it a look, but it's out of play. When you say opens up or, or, or with his body, tell me a little more about what you mean there. So he starts on the extreme first base side of the rubber and he's striding towards the middle of the mound. He's striding across his body, so now he's got to. To get the ball online, he's got a, his front side has to stay closed. Sometimes when you get that closed, that front side can open up too soon. That ball can sail to the arm side. That was a great play, and he pulled it hard out of the ballpark. That scares you a little bit if you're the other team in, on the mound. Takes a strike here, 0 and 1. First pitch breaking ball, absolutely the way to, way to go there. Harbor's sitting fastball. Great time now to go an 0-1 fastball, maybe a little cross pitch. A lot of times this is an off-speed count for folks. There it was, 0-2. You saw the 361 average for him overall this year. He's also hitting 361 in the ACC. That's remarkable this deep into the season. Yeah, it's, and it's he's really balanced in the box. He looks really controlled, really does a good job of slowing the at-bats down. Feathered off to the right, and it's still nothing in two on the Tar Heel first baseman. Higgins looking for the put-away pitch, and boy, what would that do for the confidence of Higgins to be able to work a one, two, three inning? We used to have a, a fine and pro ball. You get the first two guys out. It would be two outs, two balls, 50 cents. The number of times that a pitcher would get those first two outs quickly and then go 2-0 and on the third hitter because he's thinking how easy this inning is, and all of a sudden he's walking a guy, gives up a base hit, working out of some trouble. Two outs, two balls, 50 cents. I, I gave up a lot of quarters back in the day. <laughs> it's 2-2. Two and two. With inflation, that's probably like a dollar now, that's right? That's right. I tried to implement that, but the college told me, Davidson said, you can't, you can't take money from your players. There was, a, there was a women's basketball coach this year that said for NIL, we should, we should do something like <laughs> That's that. That's right, absolutely. Two and two on Harvard. It's oftentimes a great motivator. <laughs> Probably more times than it's not. And a swing and a miss. Stone will have to complete the strikeout. Nice start for Ryan Higgins. Three up and three down. Just like Carolinas can, can get it going quick, uh, I think they're going to need to be patient, look for balls in the zone because they're going to have to wait for something early in the count they can hack at and not just swinging pitches in the zone because they know he's going to be around there a ton. So Sprague, the left-hander, ready to go. Zach Morris, who's reached base in 21 straight games, will start things for the Blue Devils, and that's ball one.
to the left side. Gallagher up with it. And the freshman throws out Morris for the opening out. So I think you see the his M.O. right there. First pitch fastball he missed. 1-0 changeup gets a rollover ground out to third base. That's how he's going to operate. Even if you know that as a hitter, it's tough. Look at the Carolina defense. I've already said hello to Gallagher. This is a team that has kind of fielded it up and down at times this year. Tenth in the league in fielding percentage, but have been much more sure-handed as of late, especially across the infield. Yeah, Coach Forbes said they've been playing better defensively of late, especially Wilkerson at short. Ben Miller digs in now, takes low. Miller was honored as one of the seniors before the game for this Duke team. And boy, a lot of those seniors honored before the game. And none maybe have been more impactful for this Duke team than Ben Miller has. As the count evens on the transfer from Penn, it's one and one. So there's two hitters in a row. He's gone ball one and come back with a 1-0 change. And again, even if you know as a, as a club offensively, this guy's going to do that against us, it's just tough to gear up and start guessing along those lines. Another off speed in there for a strike, one and two. But then does, if you are starting to sit on that change, if he, he changes it up and maybe goes something else after that Absolutely, first pitch. absolutely. You, you don't want to you avoid patterns. You just want to do it enough where they know that you're willing to do it. Came inside with a fastball, got the swing and miss. Two down as Spray gets his first strikeout. So you go 79, 79, 79 on the changeup, then that 89 inside looks like it's about 96. As long as those changeups are in and around the zone, it makes your fastball play differently. Two down now for A.J. Gracia, who's having a phenomenal rookie campaign for the Blue Devils. Here's our two outs, two balls. <laughs> It'll be interesting to watch this matchup of Gracia, who Chris Pollard has said is maybe one of the most disciplined players he's ever coached in terms of his plate vision and the way he can lay off those borderline pitches. Swings at that breaking ball and lofts it out to left. Cook is there. And it's one, two, three for both sides in the opening frame. Teams, North Carolina, Wake, Duke, and NC State were on Davidson's schedule every year back in the day when I was running the show. Some I don't know if that was good scheduling or bad scheduling by me. Well, I mean, it worked out that one that one June in Chapel Hill, right? It did, absolutely. Brian Higgins starts strike one here in the second inning. The, li the lights weren't too bright for us because we'd, we'd been there a little bit, right? Yeah, once or twice. Higgins a one, two, three first inning. And gets ahead, nothing in two. Slider changeup to D'Onofrio. That's a great way to get 0-2. Creates a little bit of doubt in the Carolinas' mind. Like, wow, he's really mixing here. Gives you a lot of options on this 0-2. And a base hit. Tumbling into the left center field alleyway. D'Onofrio will have extra bases after it was misplayed in left. And the first base runner of the game belongs to the Tar Heels. So we'll do a little second guessing here. I, this day and age, we try to elevate fastballs a lot. That was a, We're going to try to elevate that 0-2 fastball. I'd rather see something hard off the plate like four six inches and then maybe come back in one and two with that almost like a waste pitch yeah you know you elevate which he tried to do and you miss too low by four inches and that's what happens right there so the double for D'Onofrio is 13th of the year Carolina's got a man in scoring position and now Alberto Ozuna digs in and takes a look at strike one Ozuna another power bat in the middle of that Carolina order 13 home runs this year. Six of them have come in the ACC. Higgins has gone first pitch off speed on four of the five hitters he's seen. Is that a comfort thing for Higgins, or is that something that Brady Kirkpatrick, the Duke pitching? Yeah, I think it's noticed? more scatter report. You know, a, a club like Carolina, you, you've got to be able to command off speed first pitch. You can't go in there throwing number one. Ozuna wallops one out to center field. Obi on the move, and Obi makes the catch against the wall. The runner tags and moves to third, but the ballpark just big enough. Ozuna thought he got all of that one, but Obi right there at the wall for the out. I'd be curious to ask Ozuna in the dugout, did you get that a little towards the end? It looked like it might have been an inch or so off, off being square. He certainly sat back and had a great pass at it. 
So one down and the runner at third. And Madera the batter now. Uh, it should get the run home. Morris with the out. It's the 28th RBI of the year for the North Carolina second baseman. And an early lead for the Tar Heels. Really good situational baseball there. Great, great baseball all around. Pitched well. Threw a first pitch off speed. Nice job. Ground ball to second base. That's what we need to get the run in. Kind of the, the old-fashioned approach. You don't see that a whole lot anymore. Not. We don't. We don't. And again, I'm older than some on this broadcast, so <laughs> I, I wish we saw it more. And there's times for it, and there's also times when we're thinking three-run homer. That was, that was good baseball. I missed the bunt. I got to tell you, I missed the bunt game. You, you know, again, there's times. I know. And I think you take it to the professional level, and they should absolutely do it more than they do mm -hmm. if they want from a perspective of winning, winning ball games. Gavin the Gallagher, right situation. the third baseman, having a phenomenal freshman campaign as he pokes another base hit out to center field. Gallagher continues his torrid pace in ACC play. He was hitting 329 in league action coming in. So the talented rookie strikes again and keeps the inning alive for Luke Stevenson, the catcher. Yeah, he sat back well in that 93-mile-an-hour fastball. Got over the middle of the plate a little bit. And now Stevenson. Here's an example. We talked about the pitch clock mm -hmm. not functioning there. Swing and a miss. Good change up there from Higgins. Do you like the pitch clock in college baseball? I do. I do. I think uh, the visible clock helps. The rule's always been there, you know, forever. Third base umpire was supposed to have a stopwatch. He never, they never did. They never implemented it. The visible clock helps. Another off speed. It's 0-2. Well, he has thrown some quality change-ups. There's the pitch clock. Visible for the first time this year after it was implemented last year. And I believe next year both Divisions 2 and 3 will be required to do it as well. 0-2. And just missed. Three change-ups in a row. A good miss there on 0-2. You've got a few options. You can go a fourth. You can go hard in. It's kind of the fun part of baseball. We can think through it before it actually happens. Close play at first, but the runner's back. Determine if they were correct or not. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Gallagher. Not a huge threat to steal. He has five for five this year. The one, two. Into the shift. Morris, the second baseman, gobbles it up. And it's just the one run for the Tar Heels in the second inning. The RBI ground out. Ding to their, on their pitching staff right now. You saw the latest projection, number two seed in Greenville in the East Carolina Regional. So we'll see how things shake out over the final couple of games of the regular season. And of course, next week in Charlotte is Alex Stone, the Blue Devil catcher digs in. Sprague with an eight pitch first inning, which is right in his M.O. Falls behind or evens the count here, one and one. Stone the hero for Duke last night, the big double in the late innings. Enters action today on a 10 game hitting streak. And when you talk about guys who are slow starters, Scott Forbes, North Carolina head coach, talked about kind of the slow start for Honeycutt and said, you know, they're, they're guys who are slow starters in the big league baseball who end up being all-stars. I think Stone fits into that category. Slow start last year, had a 30-something game hitting streak. Slow start this year, now a 10-plus game hitting streak. You know, and that's a little bit of the art form of coaching and knowing which guys do you stay with and who has the longer leash than another relative to those kind of starts. Positive count and a base hit for Stone. Great job keeping his hands back on that 3-1 changeup. Great pitch. Throw the 3-1. Again, not fastball. Fastball count. Stone sat back well. Now an 11-game hitting streak for the Duke catcher. Tying run is aboard for Logan Bravo. Bravo, who has reached base in nine consecutive games for the Blue Devils. 
has done a lot of his damage in ACC play. A swinging bunt here. Gallagher can't get it out of his glove, and everybody's safe. Whole premise of baseball, hit it where they ain't. It ain't how, it's how many, right? That's right. What's a hit in the book? You do that off the tee, and you're, you're hitting two from about 20 yards from where you're teed off. It's a much different game. Yeah, it's a line drive in the box score, right? That's right. But I, I do last and I singled my first time up. Yeah. Two on, nobody out. Here's Chase Cruson. All right, this is a situation where maybe you're thinking about a bunt later in the game, right? But probably not here in the new school approach. Exactly. And a little bit of it, who's up? Uh, how does this guy handle left-handed pitchers? You know, who's on the mound for me? Is, is this a game where if we get a run early, I feel pretty good about us being able to hold that lead? In the old days in college, 90% of the teams would be bunting here. One and one on Cruson. Good stop there by Stevenson. Cruson hitting 292 against lefties this year. So in there today and up in an RBI spot. Cruson's also been playing really well. Has reached base in 11 straight games. His play opens up today. Has a nine-game hitting streak. And I don't think Carolina's expecting a bunt here. They've got... Harbor a couple steps behind at first. If they were thinking there was any chance, they'd have him in front. Gallagher even with the bag at third. To the right side. To second for one. Wilkerson to first. Double play. As Joe Garagiola would say, room service double play right there. Jammed him with a fastball. 38th double play Carolina has turned this year, and that was a beauty. Boy, you know, there's a, you talk to middle infielders about slowing the play down, and you're quicker when you do that. A lot of middle infielders get excited. Oh, my gosh, we got to turn this quick, and that's when things go awry. Great job of letting that play just unfold naturally. And it's up to Devin Obi if the Blue Devils will tie the game up. Obi, after a slow start, has really come on lately here for the Blue Devils. And that fastball misses barely, one and one. Change up for strike one, then he goes hard in with a fastball, 80 miles an hour on the change, 89 on the fastball. Speed him up, slow him down. That one just missed, went back to the off speed. And a good eye by Obi, who at times in his career struggled with the off speed. And Mike, it, it, in a short outing here thus far, it's clear that I, I think his go to off speed is going to be his change. His breaking ball is going to be the lefties only. Obi pops it up. Shallow center field. Wilkerson, the shortstop, makes the catch and ends the threat. The Torrios getting a pitcher's best friend, a complete team. It feels like not a lot of weaknesses with Scott Forbes. Absolutely. Club. They got depth. They can swing it. They can pick it defensively. Colby Wilkerson will start things for North Carolina and comes up empty. Wilkerson, the switch hitting shortstop. Having a nice year hitting over 300. And that is only the second first pitch fastball that Higgins has thrown thus far. Golfed out to left. Cruson, one of three Blue Devils that is there. It's Miller in the bullpen who can't make the sliding grab. And you know, Miller, who's been a little banged up down the stretch, been dealing with a kind of a hand injury, maybe a little bit of a, a back injury as well. Probably doesn't feel very good on the turf. There's always been a lot of foul territory here at this ballpark. And there used to be even more. That fence used to sit way over, so you got to cover a lot of ground there. Ballpark will look different in the next couple of years. Some renovations planned here at Jack Coombs Field will make the ballpark look very nice. Well, it's a, some great history here, right? I've, I've coached a lot of games here, worked a lot of camps, recruited a lot. Hard to find a more picturesque scene in college baseball than the pines that are out there behind the outfield wall. Yeah, I th I, if they keep a lot of those qualities and make it a little more modern, I think it'll be perfect. 
we were talking earlier about how great it is to have a great on-campus facility. And Wilkerson goes after the high fastball. Higgins with his third strikeout. So, so he threw an 0-2 slider in the dirt, bounced it through at about 52 feet, which was sort of somewhat intentional. No way. And that sets up that. I mean, he didn't try to throw 52 feet, but he was trying to throw a breaking ball in the dirt, get him to chase, and that sets him up for either repeating that or, in that case, coming back with that fastball, which Wilkerson had had a hard time catching up to on the first two pitches of the at-bat. Some of that about changing the eye level for the yep, hitter? Absolutely. Sometimes that can be overdone, I think, but that, that concept right there is exactly what they were doing. Back to the top of the order now in Vance Honeycutt. He grounded out his first time up, and he takes strike one. Honeycutt, ACC Defensive Player of the Year last year, the only member of the 5070 club in the ACC. He was the first player in Carolina history with a 2020 year, and now the first player with two 2020 years in program history. I've never talked to so many scouts who had the same exact opinion about a player. You know, his athleticism, they call him an 80 defender, you know, pro sc scouting scale, 20 to 80. You're an 80 defender, you're, you're above average. Swing and a miss, or swing and a foul tip, I should say, one and two. You're an 80 defender. doesn't matter what the bat does. You're going to hang around the professional baseball for Absolutely. a long time. Absolutely. You know, I, th I think the knock would be he can get into a strikeout mode. I think he struck out, what, three times last night. But that's that, that'll happen more at bats under his belt. That'll change as he gets more ABs and more plate appearances. To the left side, big hop for Clark to shortstop in the shift and throws him out. It seems to me, and tell me if I'm off base here, the, the strikeouts are almost forgivable at the professional baseball level. Absolutely. Sure. It goes into that. You know, they've done the, stu the studies and the metrics to the three-run homer, you know, not hit into a double play. It's worth the trade-off. I think there's a blend there, right? I watched a video of Tony Gwynn last night oh. and hitting a ball off of Randy Johnson, which was absolutely ridiculous, a double down a left field line, and there's a lot of value in having that at the plate too. Casey Cook sends one the other way, but it's out of play. Strike one. Another good fastball by Higgins. Cook a little bit late. A couple scouts told me Cook may have the best at bats on this team. Slows it down, doesn't give it the at bats up, really grinds. And you follow him, have him in the two hole behind Honeycutt. That's a tough couple guys to get past if you're that guy in the mound. To right center, and that's down a base hit. So Cook, a two-out knock, keeps the frame alive for the Tar Heels. You know, a lot of times you've heard about teams putting their best hitter in the two-hole. I don't know if that's still the case, but you can make a comment, a, a, an argument for either Honeycutt or Cook to be in the two-hole. So I, I think there's – I always – when we did lineups, and I had – the, the brother of one of our former players is still mad at me because I had Tim – his name was Tim Friend. He always hit third. He was probably the best hitter we had ever. I wanted him in the, in, to have it bat the first inning every game because he could make it one nothing. His brother contended that he should have been hitting fourth. He would have had more RBIs. I said, I know the guys in front of him better than you do, though. He might not have those RBI opportunities. But we kind of trended into our best hitter hitting in the two-hole. Mm -hmm. And now you see some, hey, we're going to lead him off. You know, and I like having him up early. The more times you can get him to the plate during the course of the game, the, theoretically, the better off you're going to be. Ball one on Parks Harbor, who had the homer here last night. Tar Heels out to the early lead, thanks to the double and an RBI in the second. 2-0 and now. And am I correct that numbers got started back in the 20s mm -hmm. by the Yankees? Mm-hmm. And the reason Ruth was number three was because he hit third. Yes. And Garrick hit was number four because he hit fourth. Yes. Yes. So maybe and they were they were okay. Yeah, they, they did all right. <laughs> three and oh now on Arbor. I mean, if that's the best you got, I guess they'll do. Yeah, that was that was good thinking by Miller Huggins or whoever their manager was back then. I think I nailed that with Miller Huggins. You should have just gone with it. No one would yeah. no one would have known. <laughs> sure. And that's a strike on Harbor, who was ready to take off. Three and one. 
If you're Higgins, what do you what do you come back with? I'm here? I'm, I'm throwing slider here. I'm, I'm I've got two outs. If I walk a guy, you know, I, I move a runner up, but I'm going to stay away from a three-run fastball here. Checking throw on Cook. And Higgins has got to make sure he gets that front foot to first base a little bit more in that pick throw. That's really close. They're not getting around far enough. I don't think you see umpires call that enough, mm -hmm. but that left foot's got to get in the direction of first a little more than he just did there. And went to the off speed, three and two. So you throw it again, or do you go fastball? I go fastball. What do you do? I, as a pitcher, yes. never would have thrown that breaking ball there. <laughs> so I would have, but I, yeah, I would go fastball here. Runner will be on the move. There he goes. And we'll do it again. By the way, he went with the off-speed pitch. So what do we know? Yeah, that's right. He was wrong. <laughs> he, was, he was wrong. That's, I like that. Actually, you know, if I knew then what I know now, I would have thrown a lot more 3-2 off-speed. My first manager in pro ball said, whatever you throw 2-2, two -two, you got to be willing to throw a 3-2 if you miss. Another payoff pitch, and that is strike three. Fourth strikeout for Ryan Higgins, who is in the title game. Wallace Clark will lead things off. Of course, North Carolina won the tournament the next year in Charlotte in 2022. Do you like the format the ACC uses as no, a coach? I don't. Um, I understand why they do it, but from a urgency and tension of a conference tournament, I don't think it provides that enough. I, I like the so I think 18 double elimination tournaments are impossible because it's stressing. You're not really benefiting the number one seed. I think six teams great. I think there's a way to do it where you're, you're in that win or lose, win or get eliminated mode. Just changes the 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 tempo to it. So I understand why, but I prefer to see a different format. Yeah. Well, that's a called strike of the inside corner on Wallace Clark, two and two. And there's also a lot of coaches at Power Fives who'd prefer to not have a conference mm -hmm. tournament at all, knowing, hey, we're going to the NCAAs. We're just using bullets we don't need to use on the mound. But isn't the other argument, as Clark takes inside, isn't the other argument if you're a bubble team, it gives you a chance for another Absolutely. couple RPI wins? For sure. I think I think they're great. I think it's it's a real great benefit of being a student athlete. Mm -hmm. uh, the big conferences that don't do them at all, I think they're missing a, a lot of regards. A rare walk issued there by the North Carolina left-hander as Wallace Clark the leadoff walk. What format would you prefer? If you're the ACC czar, what are you doing? See, that's what's hard because there's so many teams that are good. You can't make a six-team regional or a tournament. Um, I, I don't know. I'd have to. It's one of the dilemmas we're facing with these conferences getting so big, you're almost eliminating a chance of having a logical conference tournament size. It would be 16 teams in the ACC that play baseball next year as Kyle Johnson swings and misses. Of course, Syracuse and Southern Methodist, who is entering the conference, do not field baseball programs. Well, so my, my daughter is an associate head volleyball coach at Bowling Green. She was the volunteer assistant at Duke for two years. And... The MAC has a conference tournament. It's great. It helps teams, you know, play for something. In the ACC, you don't have a conference mm -hmm. tournament in volleyball. No. And, and I know volleyball enough where if you're not finishing top four in that league, you're, you're not going to sniff the postseason. And that's tough when you're halfway into the year and you know, like, well, we're not going to be playing past the end of our regular season. Really tough. Clark nearly picked off there at first base a moment ago in a good move. Nice Sprague. And now one and one on Johnson. Another nice move over there. And Clark back standing. Good move. And, and, and you're sitting next to someone who had the best left-handed pick move probably in, in, maybe in the history of college baseball, but certainly during my era. That's pretty good. Yeah, it was. It was, it was outstanding. How many guys did you pick off? I, I don't know. I actually was brought into games to, you know, I'm thinking I'm going to get this guy out with a fastball here. And the coach is on the mound going, do you think you can pick him off? That was the only reason I was brought in with a runner on to yeah. pick the guy. Really anyway. good pitch there. And Johnson couldn't hold up one and two. It's a little bit of an art form. It's, I think there's a lot of lefties with really bad moves. His is pretty good. He's got some deception. He's going to be able to stop a running game pretty well. Two and two as he goes back to the off speed. 
part of it is he steps across his body on his normal stride to the plate. So that can give you the appearance of, is he coming to first? Is he going to home? His knee lift is similar on both, and that creates some tough reads for the runners at first. Two and two now on Kyle Johnson. And that hit him. I would be surprised if this one is not reviewed. Looked to me like Johnson might have stuck that elbow out there. It uh, the, looks like he's got the protective padding there. Let's get another look here. Uh, what do you think? Yeah. Well, this might have a good angle here. I, I, I think I'm probably going to give him the bag. He, I don't think he. So, so what umpires are, are taught is the way to evaluate that. Did he try to get hit by the pitch? I think that was more of a case where he didn't make an unbelievable effort to get out of the way. Sure. But I don't think he tried to get out in front of that. Called strike on Zach Morris, who grounded out his first time up. Second straight inning, the Blue Devils have had the first two guys reach, and we'll see how Duke plays it here after hitting into a double play in the second. And Morris out to left field. Cook is on the move, and he will watch it go. The Blue Devils with the lead in the third. One-one changeup or 0-1 changeup, and I'm again. It's easy after the pitch for me to come back and say maybe something different. His arm speed looked a little slower on that. I think we might have a. I think Morris had a good read on that pitch out of his hand. Thigh high, middle of the plate, kept his hands back. Did not get fooled. 15th of the year for Zach Morris. And the Blue Devils vault in front as Ben Miller takes ball one. It's just the seventh home run that Sprague has allowed this year. As a matter of fact, North Carolina has allowed just their, now their 48th home run of the year. Carolina came into action today having given up the fewest home runs of any pitching staff in the ACC. So they've done a great job of keeping the ball in the yard. And that time they got burned. You know, and Sprague runs it up there at 89 there's a there's a theory that you know an 0 1 count especially after a strike one on a off speed that's a great time for an 0 1 fastball you know you, th you throw that change for strike one you suddenly run 89 up there and you might freeze him a little bit i thought he slowed his delivery down just a hair too which gave morris a read on that pitch miller out to center field honeycutt will gobble that one up for the first out Brings A.J. Gracia to the plate. That's a good bounce back there, too. Nice break, is it not? Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially walk to the eight hole, hit the nine guy, home run to the leadoff guy. That's where you get to clear it and just say, all right, nobody on, nobody out. High strike there on Gracia. He didn't think much of that call from Ryan Clark, who has the plate today. Getting a little bit of conversation from the Duke bench on that I believe not that coach Pollard would ever <laughs> question a <laughs> ball strike call <laughs> Gracia having a phenomenal rookie campaign he's already got the single season program records for freshmen and home runs and runs batted in I feel like this is a guy who could play this game for a long time he's got some maturity about himself in the batter's box the way he handles his at bats he would never Put the freshman label on him. He reminds me of a guy that played for Duke several years ago and the way he's carried himself as a freshman, like Joey Loprofito. Absolutely. Just made his debut with the Houston Astros earlier this year. And tight two and two. Loprofito also had his first career home run for the Astros last night as they beat the Athletics. Some guys you can just tell, you know, like when, like when they walk on campus, that's a big leaguer. Into the shift, the shortstop Wilkerson on the right side of the bag for the second out. And those are the guys who, as a coach, you let work through some tough times more than yeah. another without being able to explain to someone why that is. You just know it's just the feel. Yep. Here's Alex Stone extending his hitting streak to 
11 straight games his last time up. Two outs, nobody on. Single off of a change up last time. And ball one. I figure Stone's going to get a guy. It'll be a guy who will get a look by somebody at the professional level. Absolutely. Good, solid, behind the plate, receives well. Roll to third. It hits the bag. It's fair. And Stone with a two out knock. Actually, a really good pitch. He got Stone to roll over. I think that would have been, if it didn't hit the bag, it was going to get past Gallagher anyway. Living right. That would have had to have been a Brooks Robinson kind of play if Gallagher, had, if it hadn't hit the bag, he would have taken that ball going into foul territory. I don't think Stone runs great. Maybe he would have had a shot at him. And now Bravo nubs one to the pitcher. Spraying. Ooh, a little treacherous. But he's not looking great for tomorrow during the day. Some folks sitting around their office and suddenly saw it across their computer an opportunity or a reason to leave the office early today. They used to call those back in the day as first pitch is high from Higgins ball one. When you'd have like one of those one o'clock getaway day starts, it would be a business person special. <laughs> We've all worked with folks who've had a lot of those uh, yeah. in around. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. 2-0 and oh now as Higgins falls behind the North Carolina right fielder. So Chris Pollard's got to be happy. 47 pitches. Hit. We're here in the fourth inning. I think this is the kind of length he was hoping for. How much, how deep he's going to go, I'm not sure. I can't see if there's activity or not. There's not. Nafrio the other way. Krusen for the first out. 2 0 fastball on the outside part of the plate. Pretty good pass at it by D'Onofrio. Just, just far enough off the middle part of the plate. He wasn't able to quite get through it. Higgins has been up to 72 pitches this year, so he's got some capacity to go a little deeper if this does not turn into a high leverage inning against yeah, him. Yeah, I've just got to believe, he, you know, if I'm in the dugout and I, I and he's pitching comfortably, if I'm thinking, boy, I hope I get four out of him, and suddenly you do, you, well, maybe I can get five. Or uh, you just take as many outs away from that bullpen as you can. How do you balance that? Up? There, there is some bullpen activity now as we say that. Oh, and Brooks will start to get loose. How do you balance that as Ozuna fouls one off about Wanting to get as much as you can, but also not being too greedy to put yourself in a bad spot. Yeah, I think you got to know the pitcher a little bit. You've got to know the game situation. Uh, you know, there were some pretty t distinct setups that I tried to avoid bringing relievers into, tried to get starters out when we were feeling good about them. Uh, there is more art than science to it, but I think it's a valuable piece. Oh, soon it stays alive. I think there's way too much of the, you know, we're not going to let this guy see it the team third time through the lineup or you know you, hey you gave me three great innings I'm getting you out of there well you know let's let's see what we've got out of this guy again it's kind of like that other player some pitchers get a longer leash than others in that regard still 0-2 on the North Carolina DH yeah. as Ozuna takes upstairs a really good elevated 0-2 fastball miss right there Ozuna nearly ran one out of here in his first at bat Devin Obi making the catch right against the center field fence I'm going to bet my house we're going to see a slider here. Got him. Fifth strikeout for Higgins, and the first two men retired in the fourth. Looked like it could have been a changeup, although the velocity was hard for a change, but it wasn't a slider, and it wasn't his four-seamer. But it was a great pitch, great location. Had a little bit, a little bit of sink to it in the middle of the zone. Third time this year, Higgins has recorded five or more strikeouts in a game and the fourth time in his career as the first pitch in there for a strike on North Carolina second baseman. Adira, who had shortened the bunt there, took a strike. There's an old theory. It still is important. You picture a box three inches above the knee, six inches below. We're trying to fill up that box. Nowadays, we elevate fastballs more. And you talk about if you're ahead, you tilt the box. All, 
kinds of fun stuff that we learned back in the 70s when we all knew how to pitch. <laughs> Not biased at all now, are you? To the right side, backhanded by Morris and Ryan Higgins with that shutdown inning for the Blue Devils. Three up. Polished pitchers, but also allowing them, helping them develop uh, in, a, in a pretty stout conference and uh, a great schedule that Carolina always runs out there. Have to grow up quickly, too, if you're a freshman in this sure league. Sure do. Chase Cruson digs in and takes ball one. Cruson grounding into a double play his first time up. Yeah. Nasty breaking ball there. That's only the sixth breaking ball he's thrown all day in 48 pitches, and they've all been the lefties. Four for balls, two for strikes. One and two now. And he makes that 87 mile an hour fastball inside look pretty good. So if you're a Duke hitter, are you looking for, for a Sprague to, to mix it up a little more now as he continues the second time through the order? I think with him, what, what makes him tough and what you have to be careful of as a hitter, you don't want to start trying to guess and figure out what he's going to throw because you you're playing right into him at that point. Um, in his mind, he may try to change patterns a little bit, but you as a hitter have to say, one pitch, one spot. Maybe you guess an off-speed pitch once in a blue moon, but boy, you don't want to be falling into, I think he's going to throw this, because that's when you get beat by a... To first, Harbor there, and he will take it himself for the opening out. One thing left-handers don't do, and thinking back 40-some years when I pitched, my best off-speed was a changeup. Uh, I never threw it to left-handers because we were told you don't do that. Um, I would love to see him, and maybe he does it, I would love to see him go left on left changes. We see right on right changes more than left on left. Uh, I think he might be leaving. I think that could be a great addition for him. Why is it so rare to see that left on left change up? You know, I, I think conventional wisdom is lefties like the ball down and in. If a lefty change up misses the middle, it might roll run inside but you know you're not getting the guy out you're getting him out because of your arm speed and the fact he's out in front it looks like a fastball not because of where you're throwing your change necessarily if you get great arm speed you can beat him anywhere in the zone like that fouled by Obi it's one and two Obi popped out to the shortstop to in the second Trying to keep the frame moving here for the Blue Devils in the fourth. And he just got a piece of that one to stay alive. You know, I'm sure the scouting report on Sprague says fastball slider changeup, only fastball changeup to righties, fastball breaking ball to lefty. So if I'm what, whatever side hitter, I, I can eliminate a pitch theoretically from the mix. And he's obviously had a lot of success. I'd love to see that third pitch stay in there and it looks like we got pretty hot activity in the bullpen I'm thinking Mr. Higgins is done for the day for Duke four innings though as Obi takes the ball low great outing if indeed he's finished Owen oh, Brooks continuing to get loose a guy that's really starting to round back into shape for the Blue Devils we'll talk more about him once he comes into the game the payoff pitch on Obi grounded to short Wilkerson has it and throws him out. Two down. 3-2 change. Loves that 3-2 change, doesn't he? Boy. If I had one like him, I'd throw it too. No kidding. If, if I'd had one like him, I would have been in the big leagues, right? <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. Here's Wallace Clark with two down and the base is empty. You know, it was Clark who kind of got things going for Duke in that three-run third inning. Doesn't, doesn't talk about it a whole lot, but Clark has been one of the key cogs for this Duke lineup just tough at bats seemingly every time he comes up. Boy, that, and that was such a great at bat his first one. The, the, the misses by Sprague were all right off the edge. There weren't bad misses at all. He did a great job laying off a pretty good 3-2 changeup to get ball four. 
What have you seen out of Sprague? Obviously, the home run was the pitch you like to get back, but outside of that, it's like he's pitched pretty good. Yeah, pretty, he's, pretty good he, he looks pretty composed out there. He clearly pretty comfortable with what he's doing. It reminds me of a lefty we had at Davidson who had was part of our crazy running 17 named Evan Roberts, a soft lefty who had a lot of faith in his capabilities and probably pitched above his uh, pitched above the metrics. I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. Beat Florida Gulf Coast 2 1 and in, in the second game of the regional of Carolina. Probably didn't throw one at the fastball over 79. Clark swinging at the 3 1 and that should end the inning. And it does so three up and three down for the right or left hander spring and we re really feel better for the first time since late March and I think he'll be an important guy for their bullpen depth as they get deeper into this postseason facing Gavin Gallagher here Gallagher had a single in his first time and a swing and a miss Feels like Brooks could be a, a big guy in the series to try to neutralize some of those left-handed hitters that North Carolina has. You know, Carolina does that classic right-left, right-left, right-left lineup, so having a guy who's good against both side hitters is important. He goes breaking ball, breaking ball to get to 0-2. That was a pretty good take right there by Stevenson. I would love to see Brooks go off the plate here with a fastball hard. Looks like he's setting something over the middle like it could be off speed, though. Out of the third baseline. Gallagher has had just a, a phenomenal rookie campaign for North Carolina. His first two home runs this year, pinch hit home runs. Pretty impressive. Oh, absolutely. That, that'll buy you some time in a regular <laughs> yes, lineup, it too. It will. Outside here. Gallagher with a, entered the weekend with a hit in 22 of his last 27 games. Multiple hits in nine of his last 25 contests. That's Another perfect. Carolina guy who looks just really comfortable in the box. Outside here, so from 0 and 2 to 2 and 2. And you know, Gallagher, a guy who has just kind of figured it out. He has started now 19 consecutive games. He's played a little bit of everywhere and has found a home at third base for Scott Forbes' team. And he checks his swing here. He didn't go. And it's full now on the third baseman Gallagher. Take another look. So this is where, you know, if you're calling pitches from the dugout, you know, miss with a breaking ball 2-2, do you throw it 3-2? But you got a guy who can walk some people. He missed badly with a fastball earlier in the bat. What do we throw? Roll to the shortstop. Clark up with it for the first out. Fastball low and away. Gallagher rolled over it. And brings Luke Stevenson to the plate. It was important for Proch right there to, to finish that at bat and not lose a guy to a walk after an 0-2 on my first hitter. Oh, good point. What, what does that do for the mindset of a pitcher? A ton. He's going, hey, one out, nobody on. It's so much different if you got, hey, I had the leadoff guy 0-2 and I walked him. That's when those innings could just blow up. Stevenson 0 for 1 today. Rolled a ground ball to the right side. And takes inside here, ball one. He's probably feeling a little bit like Paul Ozenmacher right now. How about that name for you? <laughs> I don't think half the audience knows who that is. He was your vintage lefty matchup guy that probably had 4,000 major league appearances. Well, he would have no major league appearances now with the way the game has changed. <laughs> That's right. That's right. 2 and 0 on Stevenson. I think you lost part of the audience when you said Brooks Robinson. That's right, absolutely. That hit him. And that's not what you wanted to do there, left on left with one out. So Stevenson takes one in the rib cage. Being a left handed pitcher who preferred myself, who preferred pitching against right handers, I can empathize. Ooh. And then another look. Hmm. That'll hurt. So if I'm Carolina, I'm, I'm, I'm patient. You know, I'm, I'm, if I get a first pitch, I'm going to swing at it. Better be a fastball down the middle. I'm going to make him work 
the count a little bit. Low here on Wilkerson, the switch hitting shortstop. That was a 82 mile an hour changeup. So we've seen the arsenal now, fastball change slider. Breaking balls around 79 through the fastball 90-ish. Oh, it's strike, comes back with the fastball to even the count. Action is going in the Duke bullpen. Should the trouble continue for Brooks in the fifth. Two and one now. Well, he's certainly got some life. He's got a little bit of a funky delivery, some deception there. He's got to be, that's got to be tough for the hitters to pick up. David Boyve in the bullpen. You saw a moment ago for the Blue Devils. That's outside, three and one. I feel like Boyve is getting ready for Honeycutt or, or Cook maybe. Yeah, it looks like he's going pretty hot. Duke by two in the fifth. And that is ball four. So after the ground out, a hit batsman, and now a walk. And the Tar Heels in business with the top of the order coming up. So again, a challenge is a pitching coach. You're getting a visit, a zone. Especially Boyve, seven walks in nine innings. Uh, likely going to be an off-speed pitch here first. And a strike. And a, a good job by both. Good take by Honeycutt laying off the first pitch breaking ball. And a nice job by Bove getting that 0 1 or getting that first pitch over the plate as off speed pitch for a strike. Nothing in two now. So here's where I would love to see the fastball six inches off the outside corner, not elevated. Throw something out there, let them see it. Try to finish him with a one-two fastball. I think we're going to go breaking ball again. Did go to the off speed, and it is one and two. You know, it's, it's okay to you, – you can get a fastball by a honey cut once in a while, especially if you've gotten a couple off speeds over the plate. And that fastball is off the outside corner. And a good miss, a little bit of late movement back. Hmm. So if I'm throwing 96, I'm, I'm throwing a lot of them. <laughs> you, me, both. Yeah. Here it is. Hit it. That's right. Two and two. And it's three and two now. Really good at bat by Honeycutt, who was behind in the count, 0 and 2. And he's fought his way back. So that's a, that was a good miss on the mound. Great take by Honeycutt. Really nice job by the home plate umpire. Three and two, one out. Honeycutt to right field. Gracia loping in. Sunglasses on. Two down. Three, two breaking ball. For a strike. So two down, and it's up to Casey Cook as Honeycutt now 0 for 3 and still hitless on the weekend. You know, even though that was a a deep at bat. That was a well pitched at bat by Boy Boy Viv. And and again, I think a good at bat by Honeycutt. Aside from the end result. Now Casey Cook, one for two. And takes a strike. First pitch slider. Duke doing a great job throwing first pitch breaking ball or off speed pitches for strikes, but throwing them period. They're not just sitting back and trying to hump Number one down the plate. And boy, they way ahead now, 0 and 2. Boy, they trying to slam the door shut. Carolina 0 for 5 today with runners on base. That nearly hit him. There's that elevated fastball. Change the eye level again like we talked about earlier, right? Go back with a breaking ball here. I think you could throw that again. Maybe not elevate it, but throw a fastball away. Got a bunch of options. There it was. Good miss. So now they've gone in with a fastball, down and away with a fastball. What's the 2-2 pitch here? I'm throwing the breaking ball here. We had an adage 
2-2, best pitch that day. Mm. You know, sometimes good days you got three options, some days you've got one. Hammer down the right field line of ace hit. Stevenson turning the corner and will score. Wilkerson gets the wave around. The relay throw from Morris, and the game is tied. Cook in the third with a triple. Two outs, two strikes, and the Tar Heels tie it up. With 2-2 breaking ball, not a bad pitch, a little bit elevated over the middle part of the plate. Cook with a great job keeping the hands back. And like I talked about, some scouts told me he has the best at bats on the team. And that was a that was a pro at bat right there. Now 58 RBI on the year for Cook. And we're back square here in the fifth inning. By the way, both those runs charged to Owen Brooks. Third of an inning, two runs, a walk, and a hit batsman. It's now one and one on Harvard. Tay Boyve showing some great movement on his fastball to his arm side. He's 95, 96 with, with some life to it. Late action, moving in towards the right-handed hitter. Called strike, another good fastball, one and two. That's a that's a pro profile. The center field OB on the move won't get this one and North Carolina again with two outs and two strikes a big base hit and the Tar Heels reclaim the lead. Isn't that just a hallmark of a good team to be able to, to execute like that with two outs and Absolutely. two strikes? Yep. You know, all the, the cliches, slow the at-bat down, slow the game down. That's exactly what they're doing right there. And, you know, mechanically, they do a great job of keeping their hands back. If, if they get fooled a little bit, but they can keep the hands back, they've got a chance to recover and put a pretty good pass on a, on a pretty good pitch. So the triple and a single. North Carolina has now taken the lead. And it's one and one from Boyve. A lot of that goes back to that guy right there, Scott Forbes, and the job that he has done. Just continuing to build what's been a very proud program. Of course, Mike Fox, the longtime head coach at Carolina. Multiple College World Series appearances and the longtime assistant, Scott Forbes, now running the show in Chapel Hill. Yeah, it's, it's just when I was in high school, you know, a couple years ago, uh, that was, Bosch Hammer was the place in college baseball. My senior year in college at Richmond in 78, we played North Carolina. It was Mike Roberts first or second year there. They wound up making a deep run in Omaha. They came to Richmond and played, played us. We beat them 3-2. Um, but I've known Carolina, I've known the coaches forever uh, and have always had the utmost respect for the way they run their program, the way they represent the college. It's just a, it's, it, it's, it's fun to watch them, and it's impressive to see how sustained it's been. Payoff pitch from Boyve. Runner goes, and it's grounded to the right side. This is Bravo, who takes it himself and retires the side. But the final week of the regular season plus the conference tournaments. Boy, it, it adds to the, the stress of the this, this juncture of the season for, for programs that are being considered for this. I'm still a little bit disappointed in 2017 after we happened to win the regional of Carolina. I'm a little surprised that they gave the super to Texas A&M as opposed to Wilson Field at Davidson College. First pitch on Kyle Johnson is in there for a strike going one. Were you really? <laughs> I tell you, having gone through the Texas A&M fan experience, uh, yes and no. <laughs> I'm sure. Johnson, a swing and a miss, so in two. Although they did give a standing ovation to Dern Olinger when I took him out of the game in the first. And as their coaches said, they don't do that here. No. <laughs> Outside. Memories that'll last you a lifetime, though, right? It is. And I'm going to make sure people have that same memory, too, as long as I can. I mean, it, it changed the trajectory of the program. You know, we, we played unbelievably well and fortunate for 
the three or four week period and all of a sudden things just changed. Hard to describe. Two and two on Johnson who was hit by a pitch his first time up. And he sends that one up the elevator shaft. Harbor the first baseman into foul ground. One out. 68 pitches thus far for Sprague in the fifth inning. Coach Forbes has to be pleased with that. I don't think surprised. Especially after the 25 pitches he had in the third inning. Absolutely. Here's Zach Morris who had the big fly for the Blue Devils as last to bat, the three run home run that put Duke ahead at the time. North Carolina has since rallied to reclaim the lead. And there's ball one. You're talking about programs kind of jockeying for position. Whether you're going to host or not is an entirely different conversation versus are you in or not. How do you as a coach kind of clear all that away and make sure you guys are just focused on winning this one pitch and winning this one game? So, so you know that when you're not in the clubhouse with them or in the dugout and they're back at the dorm or wherever, or their apartments, you know they're going to talk about it. So for me, it was always we're absolutely not going to talk about it when we're at the field. We're only, you know, the overused but correct cliche of, you know, the only thing that matters is this next fungo I hit to you or this next swing you take in BP and truly try to stay in the moment. You can't avoid them talking about it as a group, uh, you know, away from the field, but you can control what the nature of the conversation is while you're there. Two and two on Morris. And he lifts one out to left. This is playable. Cook is there for the second out. For the whole time that they're not talking about it, you're talking about it too in the office, right? Absolutely, yeah. Oh, and I mean, I, my, my daughters would kind of laugh at me because we would, if anybody started talking about well, what could happen, I would just shut conversations down. I think I think that morphed outside of the world of athletics too. <laughs> Here's Ben Miller with the bases empty and two down. You saw the bullpen activity for the Tar Heels a moment ago as Miller takes the ball. When we won the first game in the 8-10 tournament in 17, we're walking down to do our little post game thing in the parking lot by the bus, of which I didn't do a lot of those. And one of our, I heard one of our players say, "Okay, that's one." Like you know, when four more, and we, and I, so my post game speech became. We're not even going there. The only thing that matters is the first pitch, whoever we play tomorrow. Uh, and I got angry at them because I didn't want them thinking that we were suddenly taking home the 8-10 trophy. Upstairs, 2-1 and one on Miller. Ben Peterson, by the way, was the right-hander that was up for the targets, one of their more counted-on relievers as we get toward the middle innings of this game. And Miller down... Swinging, it's two and two. Boy, Sprague's kind of got an interesting pattern, and it's not one you want to start guessing as a hitter at Duke, but miss with a fastball, throw a changeup. Miss with a fastball, throw a changeup. He's done it a ton. Goes back to the breaking ball here, gets Miller, and gets the Blue Devils. So a shutdown inning after the three. It'll be the right-hander, Gabe Nard, who will come on and throw for the Blue Devils. He will face Alberto Ozuna to start things here. And the first pitch chopped to first. Bravo has it for the first out. So one down for Renard. See the numbers on the new right-hander for the Blue Devils, the sophomore just outside of Cleveland, 5'11", 190, and into his 27th game of the year, 3-2 and two record this season, and there's strike one. He's going to throw in that 90 mile an hour range. His fastball's got a little bit of sinking action to it. First pitch had a ton of sink on it, that one as well. There's a change. To short. Clark knocks it down, plants, and cannot throw him out. It's kind of a fun play to watch across the board there. Great job getting to that. Osuna flying down the line. Just a good, a good baseball play. Certainly helps to have a left-handed batter up there, too, that can run. So a one-out base run for the Tar Heels brings up Gavin Gallagher. We're talking about Gallagher in his last at bat before he grounded out. Just he found a way into the lineup. 
Certainly helps he could play multiple positions, too. And now has found a home at third base. And he's really settled in well. Named a midseason freshman All-America by a perfect game earlier this year. After starting the season at second base on opening days, made now 33 total starts. There's a called strike, one and two. Well, as we said earlier, it, 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 if you're a bench player, you might not agree with this, but it's nice to see a couple of lineups where the coaches aren't having to put a lot of thought into who's hitting where on a certain day. High throw with the runner back at first. Which means you're playing great, and you've got a good run going, so you don't want to mess with the mojo. Those pregame meetings, those coaches' meetings are pretty short then, aren't they? The, the, which are the best kind? 1-1 one, one to right field. Gracia is there for the second out. One of the managers I worked for with one of the USA teams I was with, Davey Johnson, did three of the clubs that I, I, I was with. And he was a big guy. I don't do a lot of team meetings because I really don't have a ton to say. If we get together, you'll know what's important. And it was very efficient when we got together, which I appreciated and took note of. That's pretty good. Base is empty, two down. Or base is not empty. We're at first two down, pardon me. And the first pitch in there for a strike on Stevenson. Nard showing a nice, easy 91, 92 mile an hour fastball again with that sink. Right hander against the left hander, Stevenson. We talked earlier about the balance North Carolina has in terms of right left in their lineup. Were you a guy that liked the, the right left balance, or did you kind of like to stack your lefties? And it, 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 it real, to me, it really depended on who was. You know how good how good you are. I don't want to bury a guy at in the five hole, where he could be hitting three just to keep that lefty righty alternate. I think some clubs fall into that a little bit. Oh, we got to make sure we alternate. Well, if I got two guys who are really smoking it, and they happen to be lefty, and I have them hitting right next to each other, that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know there's a whole lot of left-handed pitchers again referencing me who preferred <laughs> to throw against righty. So there's sometimes having them stacked is not a bad thing. If you're Carolina and you've got so many guys hitting well on both sides of the dish, that gives you the luxury. Good stop by Stone. Runner at first, two down. Tar Heels by a run in the sixth. Another really well-played ball game this afternoon. After Duke won the opener 5-3 to three last night. You know, I think you've certainly seen some teams where, you know, Johnny Smith hits leadoff against righties and they face a lefty and they put him in a nine hole. I'm like, well, if he's really good, you're going to lead him off. He's probably, you probably don't need to make him nine and take, you know, a couple of plate appearances away potentially. But the fun of baseball, trying to figure that out. And well, that's the beauty of the game. There's no right way or wrong way, right? Absolutely. I had at one point we were all I was alternating second baseman one game after another didn't matter I just write their name in a lineup and one of them asked me nicely hey what's what do I need to do to or, or, or why was I doing that basically he was asking me Obi on the move in the center field makes the catch and ends the inning Stevenson hit that ball hard but Obi makes a nice defensive play but he's continuing his third time through the order here he's faced the first two guys in the order a third time. What adjustments on both sides now are made, if any, third time through the order? Yeah, I, I, I think, I don't think you're going to see much of a change in, a, in his pattern. First Only pitch. because they haven't really gotten into a great rhythm against him, except in that third inning when he walked the guy, hit a guy. I, I think if I'm Sprague, I'm staying. Same approach. Called strike one and one. Sprague is not allowed a base runner since Stone had that infield hit in the third inning. And I'm pretty sure he just threw a 1-0 change up, a left on left change. I'm going to run down there and high five him right now. <laughs> Gracia out toward right center field. Hit well, but Honeycutt says he has it, and he does. 
I don't think there was any question that ball was going to be caught with those gentlemen out in the outfield, right? Well, any, any time a ball is just hit in Honeycutt's vicinity, I just assume it's going to be caught. And, and I tell you, the, the, the scouts I talked to, I think they're as excited to watch this club play defensively uh, as much as anything. You know, we've seen a lot of teams in the ACC come through this year, and North Carolina might be as complete a team as anybody in the league the way they're playing right now. And if they can utilize their pitching depth, I think they've certainly got a chance to make some noise deep into, into June. Especially if they're going to play at home for a couple of weekends. And you know that Coach Forbes hates my saying that. Yes. <laughs> this is a team that's 32-2 and two at Boshamore Stadium yep. this year. One and one on Stone, who's two for two today. Fastball misses upstairs. Sprague is ready, and Stone takes a strike. Here's a look at the Tar Heel bullpen. Ben Peterson is ready in case. Four fastballs to Stone to get to this 2-2 count. That's an unusual at bat thus far relative to pitch sequences. Now three and two on Stone. And Battle. Stone had a single on a changeup and a single on a changeup twice, so maybe that's driving part of this pitch decision. Payoff pitch on Stone. And he's able to stay alive. Sprague has done a good job this year of working deep into ball games. Four times this year he's gone six innings or more. And his season-long and career-long outing has been eight innings. And isn't it, again, I'm sounding old, isn't it unusual that we're kind of jacked about guys getting six yeah. innings four times? Yeah, it really is. Another payoff pitch on Stone to third behind the bag. Gallagher up with it and throws across the diamond for the second out. Stone retired for the first time today. And Logan Bravo, the last hope for Duke in the sixth. And here's why Sprague's so good. Five fastballs to get to a 2-2 count, running it up there 86, 88. Then a 3-2 change, which Stone fought off. And then he throws him a 3-2 breaking ball behind that. Stone rolls it over. That's just good faith in, in, the, pitch, in, the, in the pitches that Sprague has at his disposal. Bravo takes a strike. And it drives you crazy if you're a hitter. And he's been around the zone, too. Only the one walk today, the one hit batsman. And you're going to probably get a few more borderline calls. Uh, no question. Sort of the, the the Tom Glavin theory, right? Yeah. Or the Greg Maddox. Yeah. Greg Maddox, Tom Glavin. Yep. But Eric Gregg is not behind home plate for any of these <laughs> games. <laughs> Swinging a fly ball out to left field. Cook is on the warning track. He's out of room. A wall scraping home run for Bravo. And the Blue Devils have tied the game in the sixth inning. Good piece of hitting by Bravo and the ballpark just big enough to get it out of here. Yeah, that's it. Pretty good change up. It was down. Bravo, like all good hitters, like good hitters do, kept the hands back and gave himself a chance. We talked about how good Carolina is at that, and that was a great job by Bravo doing the same. Now Chase Cruson, 0 for 2 in the ball game, trying to keep the inning alive. And how about the Blue Devils with a two out knock to tie the ball game up? 29% of Duke's runs this year have come with two out. And this is also where Duke has thrived in the middle innings. 61% of their offense between the fourth and eighth innings. 3-0 and now on Cruson. That's 94 pitches. We might see a little more. This could be his last guy if he doesn't get him. I'm assuming we've, they've got someone ready in the bullpen. And Peterson's been up for a while. Cruson taking all the way. There's Peterson, who's still up. 
In fact, he's tossed in a couple more. This could be it regardless. And it's full now on Cruzen. Four, four in the sixth. It's been the long ball for the Blue Devils today. Their next home run will be their 100th as a team. Cruzen trying to keep the inning alive. Sprague trying to truncate it. The pitch. That ends the inning. Came back with a 3-2 fastball. And Cruson and the Blue Devils are retired in the six. But the big blow. Take the rest of the day off. Absolutely. Gabe Nard back to work for Duke and misses on Colby Wilkerson for ball one. Aside from playing around at the Washington golf course, this would have can't think of a better reason to come out early. Outside, well, I had my sticks in the court. Wish I would have known. Mine are as well. Doesn't get dark till late. All right, I'll walk over there with you on to. Three and a. Coach Pollard actually arranged. Uh, I, I came up here and played with two former players from from his era. He did not play. I've played with Coach Pollard. It was we're glad he didn't play, but he was kind enough to get us out out there. Three and one on Wilkerson. Remind me to tell you a story about Steve Trailer, former coach, Howard University, a former opponent, and the golf course when we get the appropriate time. I will remind you of that. Three and two on Wilkerson. Chris Pollard, a better baseball coach than he is golfer, is what you're saying. He is, and I think he's he's a he's good job of self-aware. You some, can you know him well. He doesn't they... get cheated when he swings at golf club. <laughs> Three and two still on Wilkerson. The kids call that having some feel now. Yeah, that's right. There is the Duke head coach who's done such a remarkable job with this program. A year in and year out contender for the ACC and for a trip to Omaha. Wilkerson hits one the other way. And the Tar Heels had the tie breaking run aboard in the seventh inning. First time I saw Chris Pollard pitch, I was working at the uh, North Carolina pitcher catcher leader, camp seven, in Chapel Hill. And uh, we don't have enough time for me to give you the eval on him, but he wasn't throwing 90 in camp, I'll tell you that much. But anyway, that we it was a one week long pitcher catcher camp. How about that? Uh, See Chris Pollard number two all time and wins at Duke, trailing the namesake of this venerable ballpark, Jack Coombs. Called strike on Honeycutt. He, he being Honeycutt can certainly be a game changer here. Looking for his first hit of the series. Over three today. Pretty good patience here. Last at bat on this, taking first pitch strikes, but kind of let the at bat come to him. Honeycutt, the third 50 50 guy in ACC history. The other two, as Alex Stone goes out for a visit. The other two, some guy named Khalil Green from Clemson, and this guy named J.D. Drew who played at Florida State. Above average players, both. Wonder what happened to that J.D. Drew guy. <laughs> Stone out to visit Nard here. There is activity in the bullpen. There's a left-hander up. Looks like James Talon that's getting loose for the Blue Devils. So I'm guessing this is by time for the bullpen. Because in this day and age, we don't miss signs anymore because we've got all the technology on our wrists. Do you like that, the technology on the wrist? I do. I, I like it. I don't like, again, old guy, I don't like every pitch being called from the dugout, but that's what we've got. But I like the fact that it sped that process of the game up. That was dragging it down a ton. Eating over. Honeycutt serves the 1-1 one -one out of play. Steady diet of fastballs from Nart. So in a couple off-speed pitches, but he clearly likes Throw number one. The one two. Honeycutt down on strikes. Spun the breaking ball in there at the appropriate time. One out. Quick, good quick. But it's up a little bit, but it was tight. Had a little bit of depth to it. Honeycutt just out front. Three fastballs leading to that. And now we're going to make a pitching change, it looks like. Yep. As Nard gets a lot of attaboys. 
Brady Kirkpatrick, the Duke pitching coach, on his way out. One man on, one man out. His 19th appearance of the year, and he starts the left-hander with ball one. And Towns a good strike thrower, and Cook uh, has, gives Carolina the college version of professional at bats. It's a really good way to say it. The 1-0 to the left side. Cruz in a long run, still charging over, and he's out of room. Oh, took a tough tumble into that fence, and he may need a moment. Just because the fence is bad, it doesn't mean that still doesn't hurt. Yeah, he Oof. didn't. He didn't slow down a ton getting there. Great effort. Aldo Plata, the Duke athletic trainer, out to check on Krusen. Chris Pollard out there as well. So one and one on Cook. Nice hand as Krusen stays in the game. He's already got his, his hand taped up. Is there's the look at the crowd on this Friday afternoon. Man, a lot of folks playing hooky from work today. Fair number of young fans here as well. Having a great time behind the Duke dugout. Playing hooky from school as well. The 1-1. One, one. There's a good breaking ball in there, one and two. There's some of those young patrons. Allen trying to get Cook. He does. Cook cannot advance. First base was occupied. Home plate umpire rang it up himself. Really good two strike pitch here. Great job. Now Chase breaking ball. And a, and a phenomenal Arden. job, too, by Stone setting up off the plate to give Talon a good visual as to where we want to throw this pitch. I think sometimes catchers get a little too much. Let me sit over the middle of the plate in the breaking ball. That gave Talon a great idea as to where we want that to go. First pitch misses on Parks Harbor. Chris Pollard talking about James Talon. Says he's been lights out since the exam break. Finishing exams will do that to you, won't it? Had some mechanical stuff in his delivery that they've worked through and said that he's still banged up a little bit, just gutting through it. But he is turning into the pitcher that a lot of people believed he was going to be for much of this season. Yeah, he's a, a big guy. He's got a lot of moving parts, so sometimes things can get a little bit out of sync mechanically. The key, I think, is to keep it as simple as possible, to have as few thought, thoughts as necessary mechanically. Granted foul, two and two. Play my golf swing, try to have as few thoughts as possible. You always find it funny people, you know, take a lesson and mm -hmm. do all these thoughts on the range and then the pro will say, or and then when you go to the course, just, just play, don't think about. And I'm thinking that's impossible. It is impossible. Up the middle, a base hit for Harbor. And North Carolina in business with two out. Another quality two out, two strike at bat. That one caught too much of the plate there for Town. It did, and, and it now off speed, and Horvath did a nice job, like we've said this a lot, keeping the hands back, gave himself a chance, didn't try to do too much. And now the Tar Heels threatening here. Up and in, ball one. 90 mile an hour fastball, pretty good movement to the arm side into a lefty. Lower arm slot from Talent. Yeah, not much that D'Onofrio could do there, one and one. Not much anybody could do with yeah, a pitch like I, that. I just think it's, there's got to be significant deception in that delivery too, and arms and legs coming at you, and all of a sudden the baseball shows up. Good fastball. Best, best bolt of the day right there at 93. 
Now Talon one pitch away from a scoreless frame in the seventh. You, th you think we see that breaking ball like he threw to Cook right here? Yes. Went with the fastball and got him. And Talon ends the th senior. Makes his 13th appearance of the year, a 3.4 ERA and a 2 1 record. 24 strikeouts in almost 24 innings. He's one of those guys that North Carolina really high on, Dick, and he's one of those key cogs out of the bullpen. Yeah, he's going to. He's an important guy now and going to be important as they run through the ACC tournament and then hopefully deep into the postseason. Devin Obi, first pitch swinging, fouls it away. Pretty classic over the top right handed mid 90s fastball. Obi 0 for 2. And it's 0 and 2 on Obi. Might have been a little generous on that off the outside part of the plate. That's that's kind of a classic curveball. You don't see that as much. We, we call a lot of a lot of them sliders now and the ill-advised name of sweepers, but that's a curveball. Chopper to third. Gallagher has it. And OB is 0 for 3. The old Uncle Charlie. You don't hear it called that a whole lot anymore. You know? If I, if I were to say that, some of the younger guys now, they would have no idea what I was no. talking about. And I actually don't even really know why it's called that, but it's just we know what it means. Bases empty, one down. Wallace Clark coming up now. Clark walked to help set up that three-run third inning. He's also popped out today. Takes a fastball upstairs from Peterson. We talked about Duke being banged up on the mound a little bit. This is a North Carolina staff that's a little depleted as well. A couple of their weekend guys are out for the year, and they've really had to piece it together, moving some guys in different positions. And it just shows you how good they are that they've pieced it together this well, mi missing some critical guys. Honey Cut makes a running catch. Like I told you, anything that's hit out there, you just assume he's going to make the catch. He made that look effortless, and he got such a great jump off of contact. Somebody told me earlier today that they were looking for highlights, defensive highlights from Vance Honeycutt, and said it's hard to find any highlights when he makes everything look routine. Everything looks routine, right? Here's Kyle Johnson who takes strike one. But what, what, a, what a high praise for somebody. Well, the fact that a scout told me he gave him an 80 grade as a defender, and that, that's, there aren't a lot of those that go around. Especially from scouts who've been around for a while. No kidding. And, and in this area. If you're a scout in this area and you've been around a long time, you've seen some players. Absolutely. One and one on Kyle Johnson. Johnson in the driver's seat now ahead in the count, two and one. So this curveball, it's a really great pitch, classic top to bottom, but it's got a smaller margin of error relative to throwing, the, throwing it in the zone. Slider's a little smaller, a little higher percentage strike pitch. Over through a fastball there, and it's three and one. I think Peterson, if that's where he's got to be careful. These guys with the classic curveballs sometimes are going to miss the zone a bunch, which makes their fastball a little more vulnerable. And a base hit. So on 3-1, Johnson keeps the inning alive. And the top of the order will get a chance here in the seventh with Duke and North Carolina all tied. Now batting the second baseman, number 22. Zach Morris has had the big blow for the Blue Devils today. That was a three-run home run in the third inning. All of Duke's runs have come off the big fly today. Morris, the three-run homer. Bravo, low shot to tie it up last inning. And a called strike here. This fastball's pretty straight, but it's got some good ride to it. Probably hits good track man metrics as far as spin rate. To the right side, that might find a hole. It will not. Good play by the second baseman. Adair up with it and throws out more day. And now the 
Tar Heels trying to win the league as they go to bat here in the eighth inning against James Talon. Alberto Ozuna stands in and takes ball one. First pitch changeup. Good action on it. Move to the arm side a little bit up. To short, big hop for Clark. One down. And he followed that up with a fastball, which ran to that outside edge, and Osuna just a little bit out in front and rolled it off the end of the bat. Here's a look at Tyler Albright, who's entered the game for the Blue Devils to play left field. He's in for Chase Cruson. That's in there for a strike 0 and 1. Boy, a good, tight, hard breaking ball there. Wasn't a big, even though he's got a lot of low arm slide, it wasn't a big sweeping pitch. It was a really tough one for the hitter to see. That evens the count now. A ball and a strike from Talon. One and two. That one certainly looks like he's in sync mechanically. Really good pitch. Great miss. Two and two. Again, another nice job by Stone of setting up to that third base edge a little off. Made Talon confident throwing it there. Upstairs three and two. Talk a lot about catchers receiving baseballs and stealing strikes. That's such an invaluable trait to have. It's one of the most important things that that a, a catchers, they can throw all they want. They hop to the right side. Morris there for the second out. Their most important job for me is making those pitchers pitch better. You know, I think one thing that is occurring now in catching that I don't like, catchers are dropping the glove early, you know, to relax their hands so they can receive. I, as a pitcher, I think as a catcher, you got to know each pitcher. I wanted to see that glove the whole time. I'm going to pitch better if I see it there. When that glove would disappear or that glove was kind of sideways, I didn't pitch as well. I think catchers who can give you that kind of target, give you the good visual, are immeasurable. And they make staffs better. What do you think about, like, the catchers that they're now catching on one knee? You know, I, when I first saw it, I said, holy cow, what are we doing? I'm okay with it now. Um, I think some guys, I think it goes both ways. Some catchers get themselves in better positions. Uh, I think it's it helps some guys receive. I think some catchers, though, I've seen some college guys, especially getting in bad positions on balls in the dirt, uh, tending to come up out of the uh, more balls going through the five hole. Again, I think it's individual. Sure. Does it work for this guy or not? I've seen catchers throw from there better than I thought I would. Gallagher to the right side of ace hit. Another two out, two strike knock for North Carolina. And they go ahead, run aboard in the top of the eighth inning. And a multi hit game for the freshman who continues to produce. That ball over the middle oh, played a little That's more than Talon wanted it there in the 0 2 count. Now Luke Stevenson comes up. Stevenson kind of a throwback player as Talon throws one away down the right field line and Gallagher up to second base. And now that really changes the complexion of this at bat. Absolutely. I, I can't see down in the bullpen. I'm wondering if they got lucky that that didn't kick further down the line. Duke will now intentionally walk Stevenson to set up the force. It also brings Wilkerson, the number nine hitter, to the plate. Which is interesting. Wilkerson, a switch guy, he's going to be right handed. Uh, Stevenson, the lefty, you would think you stay with the left left matchup. But Coach Pollard and his staff know something statistically down there to say this is a better matchup for them. Wilkerson's had a nice ball game, a single. He's walked, also struck out. And takes a strike. Also, even if Wilkerson does make the third out in the eighth inning, North Carolina will at worst have the top of the order up in the ninth inning. Turns the, turns the lineup over for him. 0 and 2.
What do you come back with here if you're Tower? I'm staying hard with him. I'm probably going to go off the plate, away four, six inches. He's going to try to elevate. Came inside and missed. Barely with a fastball. Based on Stone's indication, I think he wanted that one up over the middle part of the plate. He got lucky with the miss. I don't think we're going to go soft here. One, two. Got it. Back to the fastball to end the inning. The error does not hurt the Tar Heels. Pence warming up at the bullpen. You've got to be pretty comfortable if you're the North Carolina coaching staff relative to how to manage your staff. You've, you've got some options. You can be a little more aggressive getting pitchers out of a game. We'll have to go through the heart of the order for the Blue Devils here, though. Two, three, and four. Miller, Gracia, and Stone do up. Feels like this is the action inning here for the Blue Devils, doesn't it? And Peterson doing a nice job there, missing with the breaking ball, coming back with it for a strike. Like we talked about, that that break, that curveball he's got can miss. I think Duke's going to be patient here, but you're right. This is the part of the lineup they would want to have in a let's put one on the board so we can shut this thing down. Swing and a miss. Good fastball at 95. Yeah, I think he's got a Peterson's got a pretty good pro profile. 95 with an old fashioned curveball at 82 ish. That's that matches up well. Off the plate. Right side. Peterson underhands and gets the out. That play is tougher than it looked for Peterson. Funny spin, hitting the turf. Now batting the right field. Early state composed there, coach. Really did. Nice job keeping his feet underneath him. Didn't, didn't rush the throw. How much of that with not rushing the throw and not panicking is knowing? Who the runner is, knowing the scouting reporter, knowing you don't have a guy who maybe is the speediest on the team. Uh, absolutely, it, it's uh, there, there's certainly a part of that. I think too, like we talked about that double play earlier, there is some value in slow it down, and I'll be quick enough that way. You wind up actually, if this makes sense, being quicker than if you tried to hurry it. And, and he can see out of the corner of his eye where that runner is. AJ Gracia, 0 for 3 today. The left field and out of play, 0-2. Some bullpen activity you can see for the Blue Devils there as well in the eighth. Tied at four. Overshift on against Gracia. They play him to pull. And he, that one took a big bite out of Stevenson, the catcher. And the rookie. Ooh. Right off the Ooh. inside of the knee, it looked like. Yep. Watch the right knee here. Yeah. Totally missed the shin guard. If he wasn't kneeling down. <laughs> Amazing how it all comes full circle, isn't it? Still 0-2 on Gracia. And a swing and a miss. Blew the heater past him at 95. Two down. Just best on best there. Right, there you go, 95, an inside part of the plate. Grassi had been late on two fastballs, the first two pitches, so everything about that says we're going to go hard in. The key when you're going hard in, saying it's one thing, getting it there's another. Here's Stone, two for three this afternoon. Out toward left center field, hit well, into the alleyway, and off the top of the wall. Stone digging for second, and the go-ahead run in scoring position. Thought that might have a chance. Really good piece of hitting by Stone. Yeah, hanging curveball. You know, the, the thing about the overhand curveball, the over the top 12 to 6, Uncle Charlie, whatever you want to call it, you know, hitters can see that out of the hand. And if it happens to stay elevated in the zone, which that one did a little bit, 
a good hitter is going to be able to read. Stone does a great job of keeping his hands back. Has done that earlier in the day. Two base hits off of off speed. And North Carolina intentionally passing Bravo here. Who brings Tyler Albright to the plate for the first time. Remember, he was a defensive replacement for the Blue Devils last inning. And absolutely a, a no-brainer intentional walk right there. Eric Tyler will call down Albright to have a word as the catcher Stevenson goes out for a visit. There was a left-hander getting loose. Albright with two on and two out. Pence. Foul ball, strike one. Apparently Pence just has, from birth, loved to throw the baseball. Throwing against barn doors, oh, brick great. walls. I just, you know, give me a ball. Let me go throw it somewhere. Outside, fastball missed. 92 on the first offering, 93 there. Again, I don't think any secrets. I don't think we're going to be seeing any non-fastballs and fastball counts out of Mr. Pence right now. OB is on deck. Albright looking for the hit to give Duke the lead. Best on best there, a fastball. And it's one and two now on Albright. Stevenson's not moving around a whole lot. He's kind of sitting middle. And let's go get it. There weren't a lot of us who could do that as pitchers. <laughs> one and two on Albright. Pence delivers. And Albright stays alive. Came back with the fastball. It's been pretty much all fastballs here. You know, in the old days when we were calling signs from the catcher, this is one of those times I think you shake off two or three times, get the hitter going, hmm, a wonder, and then come back with that same thing. Now we don't. It all comes in on our Apple Watch. Got him. A fastball at 94 to end the inning. On Bielinson as he faces Van Tunica for strike one. Bielinson, a sub two ERA as 11 saves. Obviously, not a save situation here. Honeycutt 0 for 4 today, looking for his first hit this weekend. Low, and it's 1 and 1. Good strike thrower. Doesn't walk a ton. Strike 52 Ks in 35 and a third. Honeycutt lifts one to the right side and out of play. Slider, slider, slider thus far. Bielinson, a true four pitch mix guy as well. Coach Pollard leaning on the Ivy League experience. Yeah. Honeycutt to left field, and the leadoff man is aboard for North Carolina. And that is just how you draw it up if you're Coach Forbes in that first base dugout. Off speed pitch. Again, set it a bunch. Good hitters able to keep their hands back. Bielinson knew, I think, out of his hand that that was elevated more than he wanted it to be. You need to go back and count how many hits North Carolina has had with two strikes today. It has been a bunch. See if Honeycutt's on the move here. Instead of foul off the bat of Cook, who had the big two-run triple in the fifth inning. Would you put Honeycutt in motion here if you're North Carolina? I'd be careful because uh, Bielinson is very quick to the plate. And Stone throws decently. Honeycutt draws a throw. I think Bielinson's a hard guy to run on. Would you think more of a, a run and hit or a hit and run in a situation? Possibly. Absolutely. I love the, the run and hit, which is uh, if you get one, drive it type, as opposed to a hit and run where you're giving yourself up at the plate. Miller came crashing in from third there, almost like he was expecting Cook to put a bunt down. I, I wasn't watching his hands. I want to be careful there. He is bunting, bunts it back to Bielinson. He goes to second base and throws it into center field. 
There's obstruction there at second base anyway, and the runners are at second and third, and the Tar Heels are in business in the ninth. So it goes as a sack, E1. Another look. Beautiful bunt by Cook. And Bielenson just spikes it. And you'll see the obstruction there that would have given Honeycutt third base anyway. Now the infield in, nobody out. Parks Harbor the batter. Strike one. So if I'm Harbor, I'm, I'm looking for a ball in a specific spot here. I might even guess off speed, but I'm looking. It's got to be right that there. That should do it. Gracia makes the catch. Honeycutt tags. Here comes the throw, and the Tar Heels have the ninth inning lead. up a little bit. Harbert taking what he was given there. Again, situational baseball, right? Nice job. Second time today, Carolina's done a good job of old-fashioned baseball. Now a big runner 90 feet away for North Carolina as a pickoff to third and Cook back standing. Certainly feels different being up by one run in the bottom of the ninth versus two runs. Big difference. Nafrio to first. It's a foul ball, they say. Caught immediately by Perry Costello. And Chris Pollard out of the dugout. Yeah, and I think. Take another look. Now it's off the foot. It got him. And you can tell by the way Donofrio reacted right away. Didn't hit him. A lot of times there's that brief second, like, oh my gosh, I gotta act like I got hit. <laughs> Coach Forbes will use a offensive conference here. It's kind of been the theme when I, I chaired the rules committee. That was a big part of what they wanted to do. That's a base hit, and that's a two-run lead for the Tar Heels in the ninth inning, and speeding for a second and making it. Donofrio with the hustle double, and the Tar Heels lead six to four in the ninth. A little bit of an Astro turf hop there, or field turf hop. You love the hustle out of the box, though, don't you? Boy, you know, he, he was thinking, I'm getting a second here regardless. That's what you want every hitter to do every time. And then they put the brakes on. But as we watch, certainly at the pro level, you don't see that nearly as much as we should. And the Blue Devils are going to make a change here. As Bielenson's day is done, the first four, and the three of the first four reach for North Carolina. They've built a two all this first time. They actually think this is, has nothing to do with Romano or Osuna. I think the first run will be earned on Bielenson. That's correct. Right? Because he would have scored in a double. That's the, another fun part of baseball. It's kind of like knowing how to s score bowling. Hammered foul out in front of an off speed pitch, one and two. Romano, a good strike thrower, doesn't walk people, opposing teams, hitting 306 against him. So if you're Carolina, if you're Carolina, you know he's going to be around the plate. It's like a tennis serve. Yeah, and time called here by. Ozuna, so he will use his timeout. And Romano trying to break the rhythm a little bit there. A little gamesmanship, perhaps. Hard to do that at the pro level now. You get what, one timeout per bat? I, I think, yeah. One, two, and got him. Ozuna down looking, tardy call, but the strikeout for Romano, two out. Great job by St a great pitch, number one. Stone, a great job of sticking it right there, not pulling it, 
yanking it, just stuck it. Let the umpire see it. Great pitch, great job behind the plate. So two down, runner at second. And it's Alex Madera who's coming up for North Carolina. Golfed out into the center field. Obi is there to end the inning. But the damage done for North Carolina. The Tar Heels will take the two-run lead to the... On paper, a good matchup. Devin Obi Carolina. will start things for the Blue Devils and takes ball one. Obi today, nothing of three. He's popped out and grounded out twice. Pence, who came in and got the strike out of Albright with two on in the eighth. Obi deposits one down the left field line, and that will one hop the base of the wall. And a nice play by Cook to hold Obi to a long single. Fastball was a little bit on the outside half of the plate, and Obi hooked it a little bit. Now that is the shortstop, number seven. Actually, Wallace. got to the inside half. Of it. He still got around it just a hair. And then a really good play by Cook in left field. Really good. To keep that to just a single for Obi. Now Wallace Clark, who is the tying run. And as a coach, are you teaching your guys up by two, that guy at first base, don't worry about him because his run ultimately doesn't matter? Yeah, I, I mean, I, it wouldn't shock me if, you know, if I saw a first baseman playing behind here, not to give up the bag, but to give yourself more range. 2-0 on Clark. Where you definitely, you're telling your outfielders, you're communicating, you know, where throws should go relative to what runner we got to keep out of scoring position. But job one is to repent to get the ball in the zone here. Clark fouls it away. Outside edge, maybe a tick off the plate. Two balls and a strike on the Duke shortstop. Pence okays the sign. And that's outside. Three balls and a strike now on Clark. So Pence missing pretty good with his arm side. If I'm if I'm Stevenson, I'm probably going to slide to the inside part of the plate a little bit just to change the visual on his fastball, which he has done here a little bit. Goes up the zone and it's full. And that, that's good catching right there. Right? You create a different visual for your pitcher, and oftentimes that can correct something mechanically that he's not aware he's correcting. Is that something intangible that a catcher just does? Yeah. It, you know, you can talk about it and you can theorize, but it, doing it's different. Clark, players one to left. Cook is there. That would not fall fast enough for Duke fans. It hung up perfectly for the Tar Heels. One down. Kyle Johnson coming up. And where you learn to do that as a catcher is in the bullpen. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes you're going to do it instinctively. Other times you're going to be taught, hey, if he's missing here, slide in here. Now actually applying it in the game. Because I, as a coach, I can't see in the dugout if you're doing that. I hope you are, but I can't really tell. Mm -hmm. Johnson, one for two today. Takes ball one. I'll tell you who was great about it and would actually stop games and yell at his catchers was Chris Pollard. He would tend to miss to his arm side if the catcher didn't set up far enough the other direction. He'd step off and just <laughs> tell him to get up, help him, help, help him give him that visual. I know that's shocking. And that's outside two and up. So the bullpen's not just for the pitchers then, for the catchers too. Oh, it may, equally impor as important. You know, where it's tough on the catcher where you learn a lot is when it's your sixth bullpen of the day. Yes. This is a down-the-line guy, but it, it's just as valuable to that pitcher as it is an earlier guy. Obi from first, two and one on Johnson after he chases the high fastball. Johnson singled in the seventh. He's also hit by a pitch in the third. Two and two on the Duke DH. 17 pitches, 17 fastballs in the 93 mile an hour range. So what you're saying is he's due for an off speed. 
two, two, well, two, two count. Remember we talked about best pitch that day. I don't think this is the time for it. Fastball got him. And the Blue Devils are down to their final out. Another really good fastball. Now that is the second baseman, number 22. Zach. Not much that Johnson can do with that one. We got just, a, just above the hands enough. It looks really inviting, but you're just going to have a hard time catching up to it if you're a hitter. So it's Zach Morris now who had the three run home run to give the Blue Devils the lead in the third. He foul tips the fastball into the catcher's mitt. Strike one. Gallagher a little bit more off the line than I might prefer right here with the tying run at the plate. I might guard it a little bit more. And the Blue Devils down to their fleet now. 0 oh, and 2 on Morris. Think he's going to throw a fastball here? Yes, a thousand percent. Here it is. And it's whistled foul the other way. So I don't think, it doesn't look like Pence goes a lot to the edges. 0-2 oh, here, I might throw one 97 on the inside line of that left-handed batter's box, and then maybe 1-2 come back inside. I don't know that he nibbles like that, though. 0-2. Oh, the North Carolina Tar Heels are the ACC regular season champions. Pence.
kind of been the theme when I, I cheered the rules committee. That was a big part of what they wanted to do. That's a base hit, and that's a two-run lead for the Tar Heels in the ninth inning, and speeding for second and making it. D'Onofrio with the hustle double, and the Tar Heels lead 6-4 to four in the ninth. A little bit of an AstroTurf hop there, or field turf hop. You love the hustle out of the box, though, don't you? Boy, you know, he, he was thinking, I'm getting a second here regardless. That's what you want every hitter to do every time. And then they put the brakes on. But as we watch, certainly at the pro level, you don't see that nearly as much as we should. And the Blue Devils are going to make a change here. As Bielensen's day is done, the first four, and three of the first four reach for North Carolina. They've built a 